there, you know, there's purposely an ambiguity to it. And they really, they came out of painting, probably you painting, you painting above the people. And that lovely sense of scale with, you know, you were quite close and the figures were little below. So in a painting you can play around with those kind of nuances of scale. But yeah, I think the more, the more I painted it, the more I kind of liked that idea of this huge big figure looming in the mountains, which is not a new theme for me, I suppose. And I, I guess I always think you've got to be a little bit careful with those kind of things because you're sort of bringing in myths that maybe not part of that landscape. I don't know. I'm not sure if the Chinese have some kind of uh, mythical creature that hangs out in the mountains. I don't know. Is there one? I'm not sure. Yeah. If you've got this other thing, there was some painting behind me, which is almost sort of biblical in a sense. Moses. Yeah. <laughs> and then there seems to be this human mythology and fantasy that seems to be coming into some of the reactions that we've had to Mark Chang and the other one. Yeah, I think often the title comes at the end and that meaning is pretty much not intended initially. So it's, a, it's something that just sort of pops in and I guess you just take it and run with it, like the goal, you know, it was an engine that originally came from the fact that you were painting above these people and that was the basis for it. So then the figure becomes this kind of uh, huge, looming, I don't know what it would represent. And often talking about paintings you get to this problem where I think it's best to leave them undescribed really, that people put their own kind of interpretation on them. And I guess that's why I kind of find Titles are a bit difficult because people take them and run with them, but you know, I guess I have a bit of fun with them. I kind of like the fact of this little guy, you know, parting the waves down there. Of course, you know, the, you know it's a amazing. pretty amazing place. Yeah, I don't think you're doing much parting really. <laughs> Some of the works here are works that you did on paper, on plan air, when we were spending four or five days in Wanshan. I love watching you. It's a very physical thing for you. You tend to paint them down on the surface and you move your arms, you need to stand, you're standing, you're holding the brushes, yeah. and you're moving around. Yeah. You're, it's a very physical act for you. And I get a sense that the same physicality translates into the way that you paint in the studio. Do you want to just talk a little bit about the difference between painting on plain air and then what you do when you take the work back to the studio and start working on a bigger scale? So I was thinking as you were talking about it that that's how I used to draw apparently when I was young. The paper was on the ground and I'd be revolving around it and it was, the, it was the focal point of the energy. The energy's all going into that focal point. I never thought about it when I was a kid and I guess I've mucked around with this idea of, you know, like painting too quickly, I should slow down and as you get older it's harder and harder to do that. I found that it's a really important for me to try and get the energy into and uh, I'm trying to sort of say something about the place. I'm trying to say something about how I react to the place and how possibly other people will react to it. I guess we all react in our own way. But the physicality of such a place is phenomenal, really. I mean, you, you know, it's awe-inspiring. And to kind of paint it with little watercolour seems, to me, nutty. But I guess that's a personal approach. But for me, I want to try... And, and, and that's why I'm attracted to those kind of places that... that have that kind of power that just there's just something inspiring about them. But anywhere I go, that is how I approach them. And the on plain air painting is a way of looking. You know, sometimes I do think I'm so desperate to get painting that I, I sort of look at what I'm painting and then uh, after I've painted a couple of paintings then I can look around and go, oh yeah, that's pretty beautiful here. Yeah. It's a frustrating process as you know, painting. And well I've had the good fortune of travelling on many trips with you and I know that if you're not painting I'm <laughs> pretty frustrated, yeah, yeah pretty, pretty frustrated. frustrated. Yeah. And then, you yeah, pouring that energy out onto the works, and I, I was saying to you earlier that looking at all the work that I did on the trip and when I got back, it, it shocks me a little bit. But, you know, I do, I just feel exhausted after it, and that is the way I work. It's all or nothing, you know. As someone said to me, I've only got one speed, you know, on or off, you know, two speeds, I suppose. <laughs> on, on flat out. <laughs> Almost exhausted yourself as a result. I did, yeah, I did totally. And I 
think the, the lovely thing is uh, there wasn't any expectation of a show at the end of the, the trip. I mean, you mentioned it right at the end, and I think that was really important for me because I think if I'd gone thinking, oh, no, I've got to look around, I've got to find source material to do these large works, that would have been harder. And I just had the freedom just to just do what I wanted to do when we were there. We were, it was a lovely trip, wasn't it? It was an amazing trip, incredible. Really. And then thinking about, yeah, where could I take these works to? And that, that is where something else comes into them. And I suppose that is where I sort of started adding the figures a little bit more. But I love the idea of the kind of labyrinths and, and these tracks moving. I mean, you know, I'd love to do more works based on that area. But I think to do that would be important to actually go back again and to reacquaint yourself. The longer you're away from a place, the, the more it becomes about just sort of mannerisms and certain, you know, like I worked out certain colour combinations that seem to work certain things that were effective and I think to a certain extent after a while that becomes a little bit repetitive. So for me putting all that time, you know, really having this big huge burst out there just worked quite well. But yeah, you can't keep doing that forever, that's for sure. And it's, it's probably, yeah, a bit crazy, but look, what a good opportunity. And it was interesting making that transition from the sheer beauty of Fontaine, the majesty of Fontaine, the little pathways that wound themselves around the mountains. After we finished in Fontaine, we went to Hangzhou and Shanghai. There was a very interesting day, I remember, where we went down onto the board and uh, it was quite hot and you were exhausted for something. <laughs> 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 what we did, didn't we? We did, yeah. We were yeah. exhausted for earlier. But the feel and the way in which you've dealt with the figures in the Shanghai open air works are quite different to the, the figure, the way the figure works in Fong Shen. You seem to have captured the fact that even though it's a very busy place, people were looking at their cell phones or that there was all each, each unique, whereas with the Fong Shen paintings, there is a greater sense of that relationship between the landscape and the figure. Yeah, I, I was, when I did get back, I was thinking um, of developing those works, especially the ones down in the book, I really, and I still like to do it. And I think I probably missed my opportunity, you know, I think it was that thing where the Yellow Mountain works just took over for me, and the majesty of it, and as I kept working and working, the idea of changing and shifting to the, to the Shanghai ones felt less and less urgent. It felt probably more about something that I could go back to. I could go back to it in another form, maybe not Shanghai, maybe somewhere else. Hong Kong even. We did a trip to Japan after that and there was sort of similarities in working there. It's a very urban setting. It is something that really interests me, but it didn't happen. It just didn't come through. It feels like the distance is too great now. Um, you know, you, you're separate from that event. And, and in a way, it is trying to recapture that sense of the place, the sense of, you know, these people all coming up and looking at what you're doing, the heat of the day, the paint was all drying, wasn't it, on the brush pretty much. It was frustrating, but, you know, funnily enough, the days when it's the most frustrating, it's when you want to do some of the work you're the happiest with. And some of the days when you're painting and you just feel like you're really hitting it.